Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another fun-filled edition of Aviation Lowdown. I'm your host, L.O., and right now it is actually 5.35 a.m. here in New York, and I'm coming to you, well, right now it's live, over Skype with one of my good friends, and the reason why it's so early today is because he's coming from a different location on the planet. He's way over in, where are you right now? You're I'm in uh, Korea right now. Korea. Wow. Well, welcome to the show. It is none other than 7-4 gear, or as I call him, 74 gear, right? Welcome to the show, my friend. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Thanks so much. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. What time is it over there? I'm just curious. Uh, I think it's 6.30, 6 something okay. like that, 6.30. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just got at... in about an hour, hour or two ago. It was actually a pretty easy day. I came from, I've been doing military flying, so I've been going like one base to the other. And so uh, it was like a, just a short two hour two hour day for me, which is for me amazing. It was like started at ten. I was done by uh, like well, I started at uh, noon and done by two, and went and grabbed some food and worked out, and now here I am. Now you were saying most of the hotels have pretty good internet access, though, right? The speed's pretty good. We were kind of concerned about that because there's probably like five hotels in the world that we stay at where. The, just because of the location of where they're at, the, the internet's not that great. The hotels are a little bit whatever. And this just happened to be one of those. So I wasn't really sure. And yeah, the other day uh, when I was in Japan, usually our internet in Japan is, is pretty good for the most mm -hmm. part. That's good. That's good. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. As you may know, a lot of my listeners do. They're like, Dave, what the hell, man? Where are you? Where have you been? I tried to respark this thing last week and just try to let people know that we've got some really interesting interviews coming up. And you were the first person who I was so excited to get on the show. Your YouTube page is huge. If you guys don't know about 7.4 Gear, go check it out. I actually have watched quite a few, although I don't fly 7.4 myself, but maybe in my head in a past life or something I did. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, real quick, you know, just tell our listeners if they're not familiar with what you do, the Spark Notes version of your story and what you try to do on your social media, because it's growing substantially. It's big, man. Yeah, I mean, we were actually going to do, I think I was going to do this with you like a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I I do, I fly a 747. I fly, it's kind of unique. I fly passengers and I fly cargo. I fly the Dreamlifter, which is that weird shaped plane from Boeing. We transport the 787 wings and fuselages and that. And I was that was my primary aircraft for a year, so I flew that for a year. And I think that's kind of where uh, you know my social media started taking off because it's such a unique aircraft. There's only four of them in the world, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, and then I transferred down to uh, LA in the beginning of the year, and I think later this year I'll, I'll head out to Miami. That's wild. So I never yeah. thought about that, but that's such a rare aircraft. I'm, I'm sure there's mm -hmm. not much material out there from people of your perspective trying to upload that stuff. You know, you're, you're the old social media guy flying the Dreamlifter. That's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tricky because like as far as for like what content that we are allowed to take and use is pretty limited. Mm -hmm. So I would do every now and again, like my Instagram, I would do like a live stream from inside the flight deck while we're on the ground, there's a few flights where we have uh, like a two leg day. And so, you know, we'll land and I'll live stream while I'm on the plane. So inside the, inside the flight deck, we can do that. And it's kind of weird because it was a 747 passenger bird that they just basically ripped out the whole middle of it and then rebuilt everything. So it's totally different shape than any other 747 out there in the flight deck in the galley downstairs and obviously in the back. So, hmm. uh, it was really cool. I mean, honestly, it was cool to get there. It's cool to fly it. It's, I get tagged in a lot of people's photos, you know, mm. wherever it's at. And they're like, is that you? You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, I, you know, it's really to me a super big privilege to get to fly and to get be part of that. And when I see a 787 flying, I'm kind of thinking to myself, dude, I wonder if I flew those wings or if I picked up that fuselage. And <laughs> it, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing, but that's what goes through my head every time I see one. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's what they carry mostly or entirely, right? Just the components for the other aircraft that's we've been lifting? C correct. So when you're flying that thing, they'll pick up the wings in Nagoya, Japan. And so you'll notice like a lot of my videos from last year, I was either in nagoya in seattle in charleston south carolina or in toronto italy 
So, mm -hmm. the, and you pick up the fuselages in, in Italy. So I was just kind of like, all my videos were just basically there in those hotels. And I was trying to get to other layovers. So I'm like, dude, I look like I'm just spending all my time <laughs> in these four hotels. And so, yeah, anyway, yeah. so sometimes you'll get your schedule broken apart, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's basically how that works. Life on the road or life on the airway, I guess you could say. That sounds like a great biography. Life on the airway by 7-4 gear or something. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I mean, the, the hard thing is, is like, you know, carrying all your equipment. I, I yeah. just started doing them in my hotel rooms because I was like, in my head, like a 10-minute video would take me 45 minutes to m make a video. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, let's record them on the road and then I'll just do edit them on the road and cool, I'll give me something to do on these layovers. And sure. obviously it's just kind of evolved to become a lot more time consuming but yeah i have cameras and computers and all that stuff and i gotta haul that with me like everywhere mm -hmm. i go now right. i like you know i like to film on the road because that's kind of what i've been doing keeps you entertained too keeps you occupied i want to hit on that too i mean your social media presence and well, there's a plane going over my head right now i'd isolate but i want to also just talk a little bit about you know some of your experiences growing the social stuff too but also just on like a technical aspect man your videos are great you know and being kind of involved in a, the video editing the musician thing i totally get how you can think of like some 45 minute video uh, and then you find out that you render it down, you edit it and everything like that. And it ends up being like five minutes, but you can tell in your case, I just feel like every word you say, like, it's so particular. It's just so well done. When I watch your videos, I'm like, this guy must've scripted this, but I don't think you did. Like, are you, do you actually script it all out or you improv it? I, I basically do. And thank you very much. I appreciate that. No, um, yeah. at, at first, at first I just, I didn't know. I was just kind of talking randomly. And I, I remember the first video I recorded, I was, uh, I basically recorded the whole thing and then I realized like I was like all over the place. So then I, I was like, okay, I need to come up with a basic layout. So that's what I started doing is kind of coming up with a basic layout of like, what is it that I want to talk about? And I kind of just get a layout. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can make a 45 minute video and it's like, where are you even going with this? Oh, so, yeah. so it, it I kind of have to get an idea of what I want to talk about, then get a layout and then. I'll get into it from there as far as like, you know, hitting on the key points that I want to want to get into. Right, right. Yeah, I get that too. It's like uh, you got to get the chords before you start improvising. You got to know the chart a little bit. What we're going to do, what's the main topic, you know, where's this going to go? Um, right, exactly. Most of your your viewers, most of the people who follow you, do they fall into one like demographic? Are there younger guys or people overseas or everywhere? All walks um, of life. It's really, I mean... Like, you know, on YouTube, you can pull up your demographics and the same on, you know, Instagram, you can pull up your demographics. It's usually like 18 to 34. And mm -hmm. I think about half, half are in the US, but I got a lot in the uh, UK and uh, Australia, and a lot of Europe. Um, those would be obviously the bigger ones. Right. Um, so those are, I mean, that makes the most sense, right? Because it's all mm -hmm. in, in English. So that's yep. Yep. kind of how it goes basically what mine is too but i was talking to captain joe a few months ago and i kept saying it just seems to me like there's a lot of the european uh, theater for lack of a better term that really is into the whole i don't want to use this term but like influencer pilot type thing where like you don't see mm -hmm. that too much here in the u.s and he was like you know man we actually think the opposite you know <laughs> he's telling me how really they, yeah they apparently think it's more lax here in the u.s uh but i'm like no 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 it seems to me like a lot of the guys who are doing the flight deck videos and stuff are european oh. based so oh 100 percent. yeah because yeah. you know the rules as far as us using unapproved electronical electronic devices we we can't use them mm -hmm. so no we can't go pro there's a lot of like what you said guys are doing GoPro videos and people you know when i first started i don't know if you did you ever watch that mean comments video i did the first one uh, uh <laughs> yeah so yeah. a lot of people were like this guy's fake he's not real <laughs> make a video flying i'm like i can't make a video flying i yeah. wish i could yeah. can you imagine if i could make a video and i'm trying to get permission for this i'm working on this but if i could get like a Seven four gear flying the Dreamlifter video. If I could do that, mm -hmm. it would be huge. I would love to do it, but I mm -hmm. need to get the permission to do it, and that's something that I'm working on. But you mm -hmm. know how things go; they just they don't move very fast. So yeah, it's like trying to turn a cruise ship with the regulations type stuff. But uh, one thing that does happen quick, as you pointed out, is man the uh, the haters, the comments. Uh, you know, the court of public opinion is always in session, as I say. So they're. They're, they're quick to let you know their opinion. <laughs> so, right, but, for sure. Keep yeah. it up, man. You know, keep it up. I feel like 
the industry is evolving to appreciate the communication channels of social media more. Uh, case in point, uh, this podcast is not about me, but just a case in point here, but like working with the FAA, right? So doing those videos where it's actually me working with the government agency and trying to make social media videos, that's kind of unheard of, you know? So I hope that totally. I'm trying to convince them too, as I continue to work on this stuff, that this is really valuable. You know, there's a lot of people listening or watching and case in point for you, man, you got so many followers, like that's all valuable communication stuff. So keep it up. For, it keeps for sure. I mean, it, I mean, I think, and this is just my personal opinion, of course I'd benefit from this, but you mounted a GoPro and you were able to video that assuming both the pilots or however many pilots are on the flight deck are cool with that happening. There's, there's a benefit to that as far as for, you allowing other people to see like how things are done and flows and checklists and all of that type of stuff for new pilots when you're going through flight school, because that's not always something that's really taught. And yep. so, you know, there, there is some benefits from that, but I don't know that it'll change just because yep. that's just not the world that we live in. It's true. The liability thing is true. Do you know, Steve-O, one Knievo, you know, that guy, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So we went to, when I met him in Sun and Fun, we all went out to dinner and stuff like that. And I kind of thought to myself, you know, Steve, I've actually never really watched any of your videos. <laughs> like, here I am. Like, so I don't really know, like, what the, you know, he's a great guy. But I just, I was honest. I'm like, I've never seen him. So but that night, I went on and I watched his videos. And, like, three hours later, I'm still watching. And I was just mesmerized because it's basically just, like, the whole POV experience. Like, you're sitting right, right. there. And uh, I felt... That's the way I learn, and I feel like a lot of people could benefit from that too. So, totally For agree sure. with that, you know. But who who so. knows if that will change? But yeah, I've done some uh, GA videos and and you know general aviation and stuff like that on that I've recorded them for me, but mm. not anything that I published. But yeah, obviously on the the airline side of it, we obviously can't right. record it or publish it. Uh, I'm not saying that it's never happened that no pilots ever had a GoPro and recorded themselves, but mm -hmm. you know they wouldn't put that out on YouTube or sure. yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, turning the tide a little bit, talking about publishing and posting things on the internet, you're mostly known for YouTube, right? That's your primary channel, your primary source. I, of. I would say so. Yeah. 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 But you have at least in the past few months dabbled with Instagram and that's kind of how we became friends more or less. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's kind of funny because honestly our friendship started because I wouldn't say that I was, trolling on you but i was just kind of you'd post stuff and i would leave kind of like yeah. smart ass from marks and i was like i don't know how this guy's gonna take it but yeah you know i was like oh you know you're from new york maybe this will go over okay and, and that's kind of how it started and yeah. uh, i mean because i was trying to grow my my instagram and i was like you know everything that i read and i had no social media before i started this and this is somebody just like oh this will give me something to do on these long layovers and mm -hmm. You know, everyone had said, like, you need to engage with people inside this world that you live in and whatever thing. So I'm like, okay, well, this, this is my world of aviation. Let's mm -hmm. see. And so right. you're posting stuff and, you know, you you <laughs> sometimes set yourself up for some pretty funny, you know, comments. And so yeah. there, there I go. And I was, you know, you took everything really, really funny or you had snarky remarks back. And then that's kind of how it all started. Oh, man. Well, you, you know. You gotta, there was a time where I would probably have been like, what? you know, what is this guy? What's he doing? You know, you gotta kind of laugh yeah. at yourself. It's like the biggest advantage, especially on social media. Like some guys take it a little too seriously, but dude, sure. I knew it was, it was something significant when you commented and all the replies were people talking to you. Like you hijacked my freaking threads, dude. Everyone's like, Hey man, <laughs> I love your videos. dude. I'm like, yo, what's the 74 again? What's he doing on my channel? You know? And then before I know it, I'm like, all right, this is pretty legit. This guy's flying dream like you know here i am like you know in my underwear in my freaking like mom's basement or something and this guy's flying dreamliners or whatever dream lifters across the world you know but uh yeah so that was a highly effective strategy and you've actually able you've been able to really grow your instagram too it's gotten pretty yeah big. yeah i mean we're not big like you know obviously your size or some of the other accounts that are out there that are mm -hmm. massive but like everything as it gets more and more saturated things get tougher and tougher but it, it to me that's kind of my engagement and uh i don't engage like as much as i should if i really was focused on it but it's you know between flying and making youtube videos and editing videos and living my other living my life and all these other things it's hard to really get in there but there's a few accounts that i follow 
and yours is just one of those because you post stuff that I find, you know, funny or that you, you kind of set yourself up for some quick witted <laughs> remarks. And so I'm like in there, I'll leave those. And so yeah. it's, it's fun. And you know, you can, it's funny how you kind of make friends through social media. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't really expect that, right? Yeah, so. that's so true. I always tell people like when I went to the Jones beach air show last year, which, uh, of course they didn't have this year, which was kind of a bummer obviously, but it was me and Steph Strickland and Rob Ryder who, you know, they're like famous air show announcers. And it's just like, I'm right. thinking the only thing wrong with this picture is that I'm in it. You know, like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, I'm just some, some dude on the internet making jokes, but it serves to prove the point, you know, kind of a, a proof of concept that, Hey man, if you find a niche and you keep running with it and you just make good content, just consistent content, people will start noticing. There's no doubt about it. So sure. that's, what, that's what you've done. And it's, uh, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's tough because it, the runway, no pun intended, is so long <laughs> to get that going. And people are looking for that instant, like I posted three photos and now I'm massive. There you go. Which is kind of what I thought. I was like, I'm a 747 pilot and I fly the Dreamlifter and I do this and that. Like, I'm going to post up 10 of these photos and I should be at <laughs> 20,000 by next week. And that was not the case. So, yeah. uh, you know, it was just a bit of a learning curve and learning how to do it and tag and then obviously engaging with people. And that's, you know, honestly, mm -hmm. probably where a lot of my growth came from. And then also people finding me through YouTube. And, you know, I, I give some unique pictures and perspective because I'll do stories of places in the world. And I kind of just show people, hey, this is this is what it would be like if you were a 747 pilot. And I can't show them. All. There's a lot of stuff that we do that I can't show, which would be awesome to show, you know. Right. Right. And places that I fly to, like military bases that I was on a military base and all these cool drones were there. And I'm like, dude, mm. that's so cool. And, you know, <laughs> right. I can't take your phone out. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I've never seen that before, but that looks awesome. The other day, a U2 plane took off in front of us. And you're just like, <laughs> now, if I could record this from here and record that and put that in social media, like thousands, I would sure get thousands of followers, but I can't. So, yep. but it's really cool what I see. So I try to show and share what I can and, you know, through my stories and through my pictures and, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. But you do a good job. And also Thanks. it leaves a little bit of the imagination, a little bit for up for interpretation because, you know, you really can't show everything. And, uh, there's something to be said about that too. You know, it kind of keeps people on the, uh, on the edge of their seat and the stuff that you do post though, too, even if you're not a, a pilot, you can really get into and, uh, you know, self-promotion for you right now. But man, if you guys listen and you haven't checked out some of the seven, four gears videos, highly recommended. Anybody can watch it. You don't have to be a aspiring dream lifter pilot. You could be really anybody, even if you're remotely just interested in aviation, uh, my sector, you know, pun intended, I come from the controller background. So, you know, a lot of people are <laughs> interested in just trying to like learn the basics. You know, I've always thought that, I mean, who am I to say here, but I always thought that understanding the basics of flight and what pilots go through is actually pretty helpful when it comes to the controller world. So, you know, that's well, just they, something they, they recommend thought. you, isn't there something like where it, they recommend you to get your private pilot's license or something along that line? Well, it's or not it like used to be that. I think that they would, I think anybody would recommend it, but there's not like there's any metric of requirement. I know actually in some okay. countries though, as far as I know, there is, I think like in France, you don't have to get licensed per se, but you actually have to pass a ground school. You have to know the basics of like, you know, what a mixture does and how to use a VOR and stuff. But I don't think it's okay. actually like you have to fly the plane, but there's been a lot of people over the years who have suggested that's not really a trivial thing. That's actually pretty important, you know? So, Hey, who knows? You know, it's like, if you put the flaps down, here's what's going to happen or whatever. Um, well, I, I think it's good. Every now and again, I'll get an air traffic controller because you, you guys are required to do like, what is it? One flight a year or something like that? There used Aren't to be, yeah, there used to be a requirement for what they would call familiarization flights, but now they're actually, yeah. as far as I know, they're kind of like a voluntary thing. And I, with the COVID, okay. I don't know how it affected it, but yeah, basically it was like, you know, familiarization or fam flights where you could fly with the crew and you're just a controller. Uh, right. not to change the topic, but it's a funny story, but one of my really good friends, he actually, he's substantially older than me. He has actually retired controller. And he was telling me, he's like funniest story of my career where they were in the early nineties and they uh, were doing a fam flight down to like Orlando. And I guess they show up, you know, and nobody told the captain that they were 
controllers, but they right. they had obviously visible FAA badges. So they thought, oh, thought they it were, was getting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like he's like you know he's thinking man like these guys are by the book like they're not even talking like no one's smiling like it's completely <laughs> sterile and then like halfway through it you know they start like the small bullshit conversation and he's just right. like yeah you know i started controlling back in like 84 and they're like wait you're a controller <laughs> and they just realized that okay you're not an inspector they're like they're losing their tie you know they start they're like okay cool we're, we're not being audited here or whatever but uh so those are fam flights but in terms of requirements that's new to me i don't know anything about that. okay okay so maybe it is it maybe it used to be and it's not anymore but i've i've had those guys when they do that and i love having them because you know you're getting i don't know you jfk or laguardia newark that airspace is so congested mm -hmm. and so it's cool i think when i've flown in there with with controllers is so they can see what it's like from our perspective when they're giving weird or tight turns or like hey look you're this when you're doing this like this you're really getting us loaded up and you're mm -hmm. loading us up and so they can see it from that perspective and i think it's the other way i've gone up into when I've had a long sit at an airport, I'll go up into the control tower so I can go up and see what is it that they see? What What is it from their perspective? Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, there's two complete different perspectives and it's good to know what are they seeing and, and mm -hmm. you, you can really learn a lot from that. And a lot of people don't know you can do that, that you can take, go up there. If, I mean, depending on where you're from and what you're doing, you can get permission in some cases to, to go in the control tower. But I think that's a really cool thing to, to do if you have the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I interface between the pilots and the controllers, at least here in the, the FAA. I mean, the NATCA stuff too, that's the union as well as the management. I mean, most people are pretty receptive for, for helping pilots because the last thing they want are pilots flying through their airspace and airport who don't know what they're doing. And it could have been helped if they just you know, saw from their perspective. So for sure. And I thought and about that's why this I, too. I, yep. I, I put, I put that on some of my videos. Um, I mean, I think the, the most thing I'm probably most known for is my Hollywood versus reality series mm. where I kind of break down movies. And I've talked about that several times as like, hey, air traffic control is here to help you. And you, remember that that is their primary purpose. Is they're there to help you if you're jammed up. They're another crew member if you need it. And I use that in the Sully movie. And I think there's another movie where I, I, I used what air traffic control was doing because it's kind of like a, a parent child relationship to a degree you're telling us what what to do and we're having to do it whether we want to or not right and then you also will tell on us if we do something we're not supposed to do so there's a little bit of this like i don't really want to tell them but you know mm. it's the, the reality is is in a jam air traffic control is there on the ground and can see everything see all the airports and has a a wider field of view so they're really there to help you if you if you need it and that's something i try to tell new pilots as well because I've seen, there's been obviously been accidents where they were scared to tell electric traffic control because they thought they were going to get in trouble and I'm like dude just tell them and mm -hmm. you would be alive or whatever and there's yep. you know a few few cases like that yeah great point and I always tell people especially in our videos they say you know when in doubt just ask they I mean people are there, there seems to be this like misconception that people are really afraid to just use plain English sometimes I mean don't be afraid to be like hey you know ATC I don't know what you want me to do like okay we'll explain it you know even if we have to use plain English or whatever people will be happy to help you uh, most right. famous example though too of that power dynamic it's right here on Long Island I have mentioned this before but the Avianca flight 52 and they oh ran man school, you know crazy yeah. yeah and there was a communication barrier there as well and yep uh, you know, I've talked to some Colombian friends of mine that are pilots and it, it's, it's kind of an interest. It's an, that's a perfect example of just the, the barriers. I think a better example of not telling air traffic control is another Colombian crash. Well, it was, the uh, they weren't co Colombian pilots, but the Brazil, the Brazilian soccer team that crashed in Medellin, Colombia. Oh yeah. Yep. Where they, yep. they didn't want to tell air traffic control that they were out of gas because mm -hmm. they skipped over Bogota and didn't get gas. They didn't want to tell them. And because they didn't tell them, they put them into a hold. And then they ran out of gas because they right. didn't want to to tell them, hey, this is what's going on. So right. it's really? it's it's a it's a sad example for sure. Yeah, the loss of life as a psychological example for sure. But actually, Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers mentions, uh, I believe, both those crashes, and he uses it to serve as his point of uh, power distance between cultures. Uh, and like in the Asian cultures too, I feel like the power distance is bigger than in 
in uh, the U.S. So, for example, like, you know, here in the U.S., it's it's perfectly normal to, like, just knock on your boss's door and, you know, sit down and talk. But, like, some cultures, right. it's, it's really not very accepted within the culture. And that's not to say this is, like, a blanket statement. But, you know, Gladwell basically argues that, like, the Colombian culture, the power distance is huge. So, like, you know, you don't really question what the ATC is telling you. But then again, if they don't know the information, how could they possibly do what's right? So, you know, don't be afraid right. to speak up. So for sure, it, it, I mean, it's definitely something I know, like, for example, the Koreans hired a bunch of uh, U.S. pilots to help them with that barrier, mm -hmm. if you will, between yeah. the captain and the first officer, because, hey, we had that, too. Right. We had that in the in the U.S. with our pilots having, you know, our captains having the God complex. I don't know yeah. if you heard this joke where captains would sit down and they'd go, this is an invisible line in the in the cockpit this side of the cockpit is our, my side and this side of the cockpit is our side, right? Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. that kind of thing, or you're in yeah. here to swing the gear and shut up, you know, that old. And I flew with some guys that were older when I flew with them. And I asked them what it was like back in that time. And they were like that, you know, crew resource management had just kind of started right. and, it, you know, and just kind of like that culture had just started to go away. So it took, but it took a long time for that change to happen. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, there's this old, what is it, that, uh, you, you know, people don't really change. They kind of just uh, just retire or kind of die off, right? I mean, not to say people should die off, but I'm saying that it's very hard to change culture. That's not something that people just willingly, they wake up one day and they're like, you know what, all the stuff I've learned subconsciously throughout my entire career, I'm just going to get rid of. Like, <laughs> it doesn't really work, you right. know? but sometimes you absolutely can, can help. Like, I actually remember reading about that Korean thing. I think one of the things they did, I may be wrong, but didn't they make them speak English? Because they, you know, it kind of put them on the same level of uh, the playing field if they didn't speak their native tongue it's like everybody was new <laughs> because they had to speak english so oh, i don't know is that was that part you mean a part of them sending mm -hmm. u.s pilots in there to i don't know yeah. that i don't know yeah i didn't i didn't hear about that but i'll have to look that up possible but i think that was actually a big factor because it's like all right you know you might be the the foremost expert but all of a sudden if you got to speak in a native tongue and the other guy does too you're kind of equally as like in the in the whoa this is a little weird you know this is uh disarming in a way uh, but yeah, I, I mean, now they're some of the safest airlines in the world. But back in the '90s, '80s, '90s, they were they were having some trouble for sure. So it's right. good, CRM, man. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. I want to kind of shift to maybe the second half now, if you will, going back to Instagram, sure. and this is actually the topic that I had mentioned in my previous episode. Not to get too heavy into it, but you've been really, really into this stuff, and I thank you for bringing this into the attention, into the limelight for the aviation industry. And it's beyond just aviation, but it has to do with intellectual property and specifically just photos, man. You know, people are putting photos on Instagram or their blogs or YouTube, and maybe they don't have the rights to do it. And I actually didn't even think about this in relationship to aviation until you made, I guess it's two videos now. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the story with this? What happened? What, what kicked you off? So what, what originally kicked it off was is because of COVID, I, haven't, I wasn't able to go home and I wanted to make a video. Uh, you know, I'd been doing some like flight simulator videos and I wanted to do a video because a lot of these pilots, uh, some of my pilot friends, I asked them what they were doing during COVID. They're like, I'm just playing flight sim at home. I was like, oh, that's crazy. So I thought this would be a cool way for me to give back, hopefully to some pilots that are sitting at home. I'll make a video where I'll let them send in their video clips of them doing something fun in a flight sim game. And I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give away two grand in cash on, on PayPal. And mm -hmm. so I was, I reached out to a bunch of these large Instagram accounts who it had kind of bothered me that they were stealing content, but I just had kind of put it as like a, okay, well, this is, the, I'm, you know, kind of new to social media and this is kind of an acceptable thing, Norm. And I'd reached out to a lot of them and a lot of them just blew me off. Or mm -hmm. we're saying, you know, it was kind of like, pay me some money or I'm not interested attitude, right. right? Right. And that's what set me off. I was like, you guys are taking in some of these, some of these people aren't, some of these accounts, I, I don't know, but I don't think they're pilots. And so, you know, they're, they're taking this stuff and taking content from pilots and from plane spotters and from aviation enthusiasts. And then when I'm saying, hey, I want to give back to these people. They're just like, well, give me some money to promote your thing. Right. And that's what sent me over the edge. I was like, mm -hmm. nope, now, now, now I'm done. And 
I I paid off I paid off all the guys that that were in the video except one guy he can't figure out how to get his PayPal set up but I already paid everybody <laughs> and you know the thing is 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 like that's what really kicked me off though I was like you guys just want to take 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 and then when you have the opportunity to give something it's just like you want to take or not help at all and that's what really kicked it off for me and then I was like okay now. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna do this and that's what started the first my first ever rant video where you know it's got my big red background and my face where i'm screaming <laughs> and that's what started that off and Dude, and it's so you know, funny man. So. when was that when was that video the the original one that you were talking about now it was like a few maybe weeks yeah maybe a month ago yeah. yeah so really recent and you know it's funny i'll let you continue the story but just for the listeners who don't know but like i say in the beginning you know really polished well produced amazingly well spoken content and then it got out to the just like propping and distic like really yelling like i mean dude you're, you're <laughs> pissed dude i mean i was like this is awesome you know so yeah what happened? what happened after you put that video up so that's what that's what got me fired up and i was like okay so now it's on <laughs> so i took uh, screenshots from you know them you know pictures from them asking me for money and you know me reaching out and them just seeing it and ignoring i did all of this stuff i put it all out and a lot of people were like whoa you really just put everybody on blast but i, I right. said hey well if i'm gonna do this uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna put it all out there right sure. so that's what i did and i put it all out there and obviously i got a lot of blowback and there were some people that were really upset but i also had more a lot more support from plane spotters and aviation enthusiasts that are like, thank you, because I felt like I was being bullied. Nobody was standing up for us. Uh, I didn't know what to do about this. I felt like I was alone. And I have never had one of my videos shared via Instagram stories that much where I was getting mentioned. Right. And I, I don't know, probably in the first day or two days, it must have been 20 or 30 people mentioning me in their story, which has never happened, right? My yep. little tiny 40-some thousand Instagram. And it wasn't something that was only happening in aviation. It happens in every niche, but it's obviously that's what I know. I know the aviation side. So right. that's what, that's what really kicked it off. And I called out a lot of big Instagram accounts and I showed pictures of their DMS uh, back and forth. And, you know, I didn't even get into some of the really gritty details. I had some other details, but I, I didn't want to make this a 25 minute video where I'm, you know trying to just tear them apart i just was like i was calling them out for what it was which is you guys are taking people's photos without permission and you're making money off of other people's work and you're not giving anything back and that's sure. that's that's what it started off as for sure now i was tipped off by this uh or to this story rather because i actually do follow one of those pages just because i have a few hundred that i follow you know i don't really interact with them or anything but i saw this post and I won't mention the page, but you guys can figure it out pretty quickly if you're on Instagram. But uh, I'll read you just the basic post of what it said. Um, it just said, blah, 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 I'm speaking openly from my heart for the first time on this topic. And this was actually posted on their page. And they have hundreds of thousands of followers. It says, uh, this is in regards to two videos made by the YouTuber 74 Gear, who blamed all aviation, quote, repost pages of stealing content and persisted to shut them all down. So that was like the first quote. I'm like, how does somebody shut down a bunch of Instagram pages? Um, right. But it goes on to basically say that, you know, I've received many messages from people showing support, meaning this guy who reposts content had gotten a lot of support. And it goes on to just basically describe the story of the page. And, you know, it's one thing to have the post, but what really got to me were all the comments like backing this page up. Because on one hand, a lot of people probably wouldn't mind if their stuff was reposted, if they're tagged. You know, they might get a lot of followers from that. But but you, but you don't. So, you yeah. don't really. That's the thing. You don't. Yeah. So I've had my content stolen and, and I'm guilty of this too when – some of these pages started taking my content without per my permission. I was like, oh, this huge validation feeling because right. I'm not a photographer. I, I don't know Instagram. And here I posted up this video. I think the first one was a was a plane flying over the top of us, like a thousand feet above us, right on a right. Uh, like a head on. Right. And that was one of the first things that had, of mine that had gotten had gotten shared. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. My account's going to grow. And it's sure. like, uh, nope. Right. right. And so. Right. Then, you know, and it was on, 
you know, all, a lot of these different repost accounts. And I'm like, you know, okay, well, that's weird. And then it happened again, then it happened again. And, you know, these repost accounts, it's funny because they go, okay, well, we, we credited them. And in that post that you're talking about, he's like, we, n- we never stole it. We never steal anything. We credit them. Right. Well, that's still stealing. It right. Is. And it, it's, it's kind of like, if I came to your house, took your car, but wrote Dave on the bumper and then just drove it around town and you'd be like, get pulled over. Like that's Dave's car. And like, sure. It says Dave on the bumper. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, but you didn't ask permission to take it. Right. But I credited him. Right. It's, it's, it's exactly that. Right. So it, that's the problem that they think it's totally acceptable. I credited them, but that's not, it's their, it's their picture. It's their video. Mm-hmm. And so then he says, you can watermark it and you can say, don't repost. Well, it shouldn't have to be like that. I shouldn't have to say like, right. don't steal my content or put my logo on a picture. Right. I posted it up there. So instead of the thousands of people just in the aviation age, instead of the thousands of people who are pushing out content, now we all have to watermark it. So 10 people don't steal it. No, <laughs> I don't think so. That doesn't make sense to me. And and that that argument is ridiculous. And you right. saw, I mean, somebody, so that account that you're talking about, they got their account suspended for several hours, right? Mm-hmm. They did. I saw that. Yep. And now I get, so I was flying or somewhere, I don't know. I got all these messages. Like I land them. There's like all these messages and they're like, how dare you? And <laughs> no. you shut him down. And I'm like. That's when you called me, right? You, you right. Yeah. Me. And yeah. so I'm like, dude. <laughs> look at this. And, and I was like, I can't believe this is that this is going on. Like I'm not Mark Zuckerberg. I don't have the power to shut. I'm like, got like 40,000 on Instagram. I'm a right. nobody. I don't have a blue check mark. Right. Yeah. I'm a nobody. Uh, I don't have the power to shut anybody down, but probably what happened is so many people watched that and said like, yeah, I never gave you permission to take my content. And so they they, I, sh- I showed him the, the second video because I hate when people give you a problem without a solution. And that's basically what I did in the first video. I gave this massive problem, but I didn't give anybody a solution on how to do it. So I was like, cool, I'll make a second video and I'll give you a solution of how to do it. And so that's what I did. And I think probably what happened is a lot of people went to a lot of these pages and said, I never gave you permission to do that. And they they put the copy. They follow the copyright rules on Instagram, mm-hmm. and probably enough people have did that in a short enough time that the account got suspended, so Instagram could review it. Right. Now they got their account back, and it is what it is. And mm-hmm. you know, I said in that video, like, if you want to follow these accounts, go for it. But people need to be at least educated to what it is that they're doing. And you know, right. they said he said in there, like, oh, you know, we wish we could talk about it, and blah blah you don't want to talk to me about it because you, one, you blocked me. So you obviously don't want to talk about it Two, anybody who put post comments on, you know, some of these Instagram pages that they say, like you take, you're taking our content without permission. A lot of these Instagram pages are deleting their comments. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to hide the reality of it. And since this has happened, I've had several people reach out to me and say, Hey, thank you. At least now a lot, not all, but a lot of these Instagram accounts are asking me for permission for my photos. Right. So, or they've changed. And some of these, ins- these big Instagram accounts are now posting and saying stuff like, this is our friend who sent this to us. This is his, or this is our picture that we took. Like they've changed their tune. And my, my point is, is they made all these negative comments about me and I'm this, that, and the other thing. But if they were doing everything legit from the beginning, why are you changing? What, right. what you know, there's, right. there's obviously there was something shady. Otherwise you wouldn't have changed what you were doing. Yeah. So, I mean, in that sense, your point got across and people were very receptive for, for better or for worse. They were definitely paying attention, which I always say, you know, be remarkable. People will pay attention. And that was a remarkable video, quite literally in the sense that you couldn't actually watch that and not feel something. I mean, the first video, man, for those listening, you got to check out seven four's original video of him getting pissed. I mean, I felt the heat off my monitor when I watched that, my computer. Uh, But also just the comments of when somebody, when this one particular page posted about how, you know, we've built 
careers. We've helped get their videos and pictures out there. We've seen it. It's like, yeah. that's all, that's all good and cool. But at the end of the day, you still don't own the copyright to those original works. And, you know, to get into the nitty gritty, but it would have to be considered here in the U S it would be considered fair use. And none of this would be considered fair use. I mean, if you're using someone else's stuff without their permission to build a brand at one that you're profiting on, that's like, you can't do that. I mean, again, some people, and I think a lot would probably be okay only because because, like you say, a lot of them are disillusioned by the idea that, hey, you know, I'm getting this this uh, kind of a glorification, this uh, approval. Validation. Validation. That's the word. Right. And, you know, that's cool, I guess. Good for them. But for those those who can see through it and they're like, hey, you know, I spend a lot of time doing this. This is my hobby. This is my livelihood. And you can't really just take my stuff. Well, they have a point. And a lot of people I just feel like they didn't understand that at all. Like you can't just repost stuff. If somebody wants to take it down, they should have it taken down, you know? So, right. But anyway, and they should, yeah. they shouldn't have to watermark their photos or say, don't repost it or send a DM. Like, that's a thing. It's like, this whole thing is like, well, you can watermark your photos and you can do that, but okay. But it shouldn't have to be that way because yeah. like you said, they're taking it without permission, then making money off of it. Yeah. And then they're going like, Oh, it seems totally acceptable. And he said, oh, we're working on a different page, but, you know, we this, we found a real winner with this. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's like saying I could have a job, but what I found to make a lot more money was to go to the bank and then just take the money. <laughs> that was a lot easier than actually doing this whole job thing, which takes up a lot of my time. Sure. You know, the yep. plane spotters are out there for hours, hours to get one cool photo or one cool video. And I had this guy send me a message like, so, so what? Who cares? You took that video of a plane flying over you that took like 10 seconds of your life. Okay, but to get into a position to be able to take that photo took thousands of hours of flying and years mm-hmm. of my life to be able to sit up there to be able to have the rights to even take that photo. 100%, so, man. 100%. Yeah, it's, in, you know, it's, it's one of these, and it, and it really got me fired up when these guys started trying to see if they had said, Hey, you know what? That's a totally valid thing. I never even considered it from the viewpoint of we're taking it without permission. And I seen how many people have shared this and that's, yeah, that's totally legit. Um, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to change our account now and we're not going to do that. We're only going to post our own original content. I've right. been like, cool. Yeah. But that's right. not what they wanted to double down. Like, no, what we're doing is okay because it's okay. And some right. guy, I don't, I, th- I think I sent you a photo of it. Some guy had left this comment saying like, mm-hmm. looks like you failed at shutting down whatever Instagram page. Yep. And I'm like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. And so he made this argument and I said, look, give me, I, I explained all these different points. And I said, you have no, you don't want to argue about this because you have no logical or legal explanation to why what you're doing is totally acceptable. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you're right. I don't have a logical or, or legal way to explain it right okay <laughs> great, so, great defense you know <laughs> so yeah so it's not logical and it's not legal but yet it's still okay oh well wh- what do you mean okay yeah whatever i mean i got right. some flat earthers who would love to meet you <laughs> and, you know it, that's kind of my viewpoint on it and it what surprised me more than anything was some of these large instagram accounts that backed this account that oh, yeah. really surprised me Yep, same. So that was actually the I, most disturbing factor for sure for me. For me, because yeah. because you know a lot of those same people that back them have always I see them sharing stories like fake account using my photos. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> so fun? yeah, so they're taking their. So obviously, you know, uh, Joe had just posted this I think yesterday or a couple days ago about uh how many he gets like four to six fake accounts made up of uh, his name i saw that right yeah yep. and so and i get it not nearly at his level but i get it every now and again and mm-hmm. i don't know if you want to use my face to make a fake account like Maybe good luck growing on account. instagram you're pretty good looking i don't know you could probably swear yeah. right every time. <laughs> match <laughs> match grinder. match who knows <laughs> grinder. Grinder. And, yes, and so, you know, these guys go like, oh, this is totally unacceptable that you're making these fake accounts. And I'm like, well, d- have you ever considered that maybe these plane spotters, these aviation enthusiasts or these pilots feel the exact same way that you're taking their stuff without permission? Mm-hmm. And maybe they feel the same way that you do because you're an Internet, you know, a, an Instagram celebrity, if you will. And these these plane spotters feel the same way that you feel when you put on your social media like everybody report this fake account 
mm-hmm. maybe, but they don't have the power to do that, right? These, they, well, they got 500 followers. And, and the funny thing is, is that they do that. And I've seen them do that, report these fake accounts. Now, I, I had someone make a fake account of me la- like two days ago. Flattering. I reported, I reported them. And, and it's like 12 hours later, the account's taken down. You don't need to have 400 people report the account. There's, they're only really doing that for like, uh, I don't know, fake publicity. Like, look how important I am. Right. Everybody report this account. It doesn't, you don't need all that. You right. just report the account. Instagram looks at it and goes, this is the guy who posted the photos. Oh, these photos got posted three days ago. Mm-hmm. Clearly, this is a fake. And then you get a message on your Instagram feed saying, uh, we've handled this account, whatever, done. Right. And it's deleted. So, I don't know. I, that really surprised me. Some of these big Instagram accounts, and I have my own personal theory of why, and it's just a theory, so I'm not going to say it. I have my own theory of why they want to support some of these repost accounts, but you know, I, it just surprised me because they're so adamant about every one of their followers reporting fake accounts uh, when people steal their photos, yet mm. they're totally acceptable for these repost accounts to steal other people's photos without permission. Right. Right. It's like a big, one, one big circle jerk. As I say, you know, it's just like, Oh, at the end end of the day, it's just like, do we actually, is there any substance to this stuff? I mean, me personally, I've never really had the imposter thing. Although I will say that there has been people, there have actually been multiple people over the years who have used my personal pictures on like Tinder and, and at least one grinder, uh, there was, a, <laughs> swear to God, I have, I have screenshots of it. one of my, my, one of my friends in California, he's, he's a gay pilot, right? So he's like, Hey Dave, you know, check this out, man. And he's, he's on Grindr and he sends me a picture and it's uh, like me and I'm like, right. Holy shit, you know, okay, that's not really good. Can you report it? But I'm like, wait a minute. On the other hand, try to fi- try and match with the guy. And <laughs> I'm like willingly telling this guy to like match with my imposter. <laughs> And he's like, dude, I would, but the thing is now he's 2,500 miles away and I could only assume he's probably a pilot, right? Because this guy is probably traveling over the, you know, so anyway, I never knew what happened with that, but it's happened to me. But now the newest thing is like, I have a lot of original works for audio stuff. I have a lot of those, uh, those skits and even, uh, even interviews. Most of them is just stupid, uh, parodies. So, you know, the parody, I guess by itself is usually protected because it's an original work. It's not like a satire thing where I'm trying to like rip people off or whatever, but I've had those videos downloaded and then people re-upload them onto TikTok. And I'm like, uh, you know, we really can't do anything on that because as soon as it's on TikTok, I don't know if you ever messed with that thing, man, but like, it's impossible to stop the wildfire of a viral video. And right. some of them have over, at this point, one of them has 650,000 views. And that's more views wow. than most of my videos on Instagram and YouTube and everything. And I'm yeah, like, that's a lot of views. Yeah. I mean, I tried to actually get it taken down, not to punish the guy. I'm not like, oh my God, I'm looking for damage. You know, no, I'm just like, hey, right. can you like not put that on there so I can put it on there? And uh, TikTok right. is never, you know, it's, I don't know what they do over there. Some Chinese company or whatever. But right. the bottom line is like, as soon as you put something on the internet, you just have no idea who's going to download it, who's going to re-upload it. It's the wild west, you know, copyright right. law is not really like a lot of law today is just not really up to speed with the technology. Like a lot of it is, it's obviously valid, but it just seems to me like the technology is evolving too fast to keep up with the changes. Um, but but that's what gets people. They think yep. what did they, you put it on the internet. Now it's free for everybody. I'm like, yeah, no, no for sure. that's, that's not how that works. And that's yep. kind of where the whole repo thing started and how these mm-hmm. guys got, you know, and they grew these massive accounts because they're pumping two or three videos out a day. And what I put in that video was, okay, look, they can share your video, but if this repost account is sharing your video, forget about you getting any of the recognition. People are going to be sharing that that video, your video, back to that repost account, which is going to tell Instagram, promote the content from this repost account. So yeah. you're going to lose any any traction that you get. Versus if you say like, no, that's my content or you don't let people share it. Well, yep. then people are going to share it from your video and then it's going to show up on their, you know, ma- main page. So maybe people will find you and go, hey, this is really cool stuff. And they follow you. So yep. that's, you know, I got a lot of messages from some influencers who and I've never asked them to speak up or or back me because that's not my style. Right. But they right. said, hey, you know, I never really realized what you know it kind of irked me but i never really realized how bad it was until i watched your video and then i did my own homework and i realized you're totally right that that took a lot of a lot of balls to come out and do that mm-hmm. and and it's funny some of the repost accounts started messaging me saying like you attacked us but we're the good account you never you should attack the bad accounts <laughs> but 
all, you, you, I've not yet seen one repost account talk about another repost account like this is the bad repost account like they all have s sent me messages or well, not they haven't all sent me messages but i've had several of them send me messages we're the good repost account but you know you 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 need to attack the bad repost accounts we're one of the good ones okay right. cool i none of you guys have the balls to say who's the bad one and i don't think that there is a good, good one and a bad one yeah. no you're taking yeah. other people's content now if you're sending them like i showed in that video bose was a great example they're leaving a comment on your uh, they're leaving a comment on your post saying, "Hey, can we share this on our feed? If we can, hashtag whatever Bose Aviation or whatever it is. Right. That's totally different. That's that's about their brand. They're asking for permission, and there's a picture of a Bose headset. So they're just promoting people using their stuff. That's sure. totally different. That's totally different than someone ripping your photo and then generating content." two, three times a, a day so they can grow an Instagram page so they can sell a t-shirt or a mug or something else that's right. totally useless. I mean, yeah. the idea of like good or bad repost account, you know, this is not a moral argument. It's a, it's an ethical one. It's like, okay, you know, I don't really care what your goal is here. I'm just telling you like, you shouldn't do this action without my permission. It's that simple. You know, I mean, in some cases there could be people who legitimately make their own great content, but somebody says like, Hey, you're defaming my airline. Like, don't do that. You know, and they're, they're the bad account all of a sudden. So right. people really quickly, they feel justified in like, well, I didn't cause any trouble. It's like, yeah, but you know, you're not the ones producing some of this content. So right. anyway, I just, I thought it was great. I'm sorry. I cut you off. I thought it was great, man. I, and, uh, keep it up. <laughs> what were you going to say? Yeah. I mean, I, I've had some people that are like, this is getting a little old and whatever. And right. obviously I've taken a lot of heat from these repost accounts and, you know, some of them have said a lot worse things than the one that you read about me. And honestly, I don't really <laughs> care. I find it funny. Yep. Because they'll try to troll me with stuff. And I'm like, you really want to have a debate with me? Let's do an Instagram live. Yep. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's do Instagram live. And you can explain how what you do is totally cool. And I can assure you that there's hundreds of people who disagree that that's an acceptable thing for you to do. If you paid people, if you paid these plane spotters or you paid these pilots 50 bucks for their picture or 100 bucks for the picture, well, then I'd be totally different. Yeah, do that. Right, right. You know? But you're not doing that. You're taking it and then saying you're giving them – we give them credit, so it's okay. Well, you tagging them is not – because there's times where – I don't know how many post uh, notifications Instagram hold. It's like 200. But yeah. I'll post up a video or a picture, and I might be on a plane for 15 hours. So them tagging me, you know, 18 hours later, that thing is gone as far mm -hmm. as we're in the – you know, I didn't know. You know, and I only yeah. find out because – you know, a week later, someone sends me a DM and says, hey, did you authorize these people to, to use your content? Yeah, no, right. I didn't authorize them. So it takes like, I don't know, I made it in that video, three minutes to get it taken down. I used to say like, hey, I didn't give you permission. And mm -hmm. the response was, oh, but I credited you. <laughs> Classic defense, you know? Yeah, like that's not the same, bro. Like I can't take your car and then write your name on the on the back and say, it's Thanks. totally cool now, officer. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> how it works. I left the thank you so. note on his driveway, man. It's totally cool. You stole right. the car. Uh, hey, by the way, I would love to moderate a debate between you and the leaders of one of these pages. Like that, you just gave me a great idea. I think that would be hilarious. You, I mean, you would Good. you would crush them, but I'm I'm still saying I'm I would want to hear I'm what telling they you say. right now, none of them have the balls to come on and do that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Yep. Yep. So all of you Instagram repost accounts that you guys run it, all you guys say you want to have a talk <laughs> about it. Ella's inviting you. I'm you inviting guys don't you. have the balls to do it. Yep. Let's do it. I'm inviting you right now. This is, I got to brag for a second, but this is one of the, the highest downloaded podcasts. I'm inviting you guys to the platform right now from the comfort of your, your parents' bedroom or, or whatever basement. And uh, we'll go on Skype and we'll have a great debate, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And yeah, we'll, we'll hear it out. You know, it's funny too. I was talking to Captain Joe last year and he said, you know, Dave, I've had a lot of haters over the years. And he said, no one has ever actually come up to his face and said any of that stuff. It's the same for me. I mean, no. of course you get the people who are going to be throwing shade at you one way or the other. And that's totally normal. It means you're doing something of value, but no one has ever come up to me in person and said that stuff. You know, it's the same thing. No one's. No, I've never had that either. I've never had yeah. either. And by the way, Joe's not. English. You talk like he has such an English accent. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't do a German one. So I you think. Know. I think his. But his mom's English or is something. So he's, I mean, his yeah. English is very good, but his accent is English. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I've never had that. I've had. You know, <laughs> I was just in New York. I had this guy walk past me and like a 
uh, Shake Shack. And he was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, seven four gear, like screamed <laughs> it out of his car. And I'm like, I'm out in Long Island. Some guy jumps out of his car with his kid. We take a photo. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had great. that. I haven't had anybody like, I freaking hate you. You're an idiot. You're not even a real pilot. But you know what? <laughs> On that topic, when I made that mean comments video where I talked about people calling me a mean pilot, I didn't realize this. But a bunch of the schedulers at my airline watch that watch my videos, which I had mm. I didn't know because I made that when I had a hundred thousand and right. you know still a little channel right. and I, one day I'm on the phone with this scheduler changing something with my schedule and she goes okay yeah all right I'm gonna put you on this seven four going from here to here and then she's like are are you authorized to fly that and I was like what yeah of course she's like are you even a real pilot? I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, for, like, and I was like, oh my God, shut up. If you, she's like, oh, we all watch your videos here. And I was like, oh, that's too funny. But for a yeah. second, I was like, is that's this great. freaking happening to me right now? So, you know, and look, I, and I talked about it in that video. Like, hey, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. I'm not trying to play myself off as like St. Kelsey because that's not it. It was just strictly like, this isn't cool. There's a lot of these little, these a lot of these, you know, smaller Instagram people that have 500 followers that did, felt like they were getting bullied by these big accounts. Felt like they had no recourse and nobody taking their back. So I'm willing to, hey, look, I'm willing to put myself out there and and, and be the front man and have the, all the shade go on me. But mm-hmm. so that's what I did, and for better or for worse, that's the reality of it. And you know, I, I'm okay with I'm okay with the shade and a lot of people saying you're doing it for the likes and the clicks. No, it's, right. that's not it at all. My my biggest my biggest videos are the Hollywood versus reality. One of these guys repost accounts was like, yeah, you, when you're stealing the content from these movies and blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, there's something called fair use and there's something right. called copyright. Mm-hmm. Like, do a little bit of research before you try to troll me because right. I'm taking that and using it to educate people and explain something about aviation. Right. That's different from me just taking the movie and then posting it on my YouTube account and making money off of it. Right. Not the same thing. Yeah, so. I mean, how you use it and what the intent is is obviously pretty uh, pretty broad for description. It could be a lot of stuff. You know, if you edit it yourself or just do it to teach a point or you use it for an educational purpose, it's a lot different than just trying to build a fan base so that you can monetize it, you know. But, but right. like I said in the beginning, and you agree, it's – it's always just one big shade of gray. It's not so black and white. And that makes it a little tough, especially when people have been raised to believe that all this stuff is perfectly fine. So, hey. Right. It, it's, become time, an acceptable, you know? it's become an acceptable norm to just take people. And, and, and you see it with flight attendants. There's all these like reposted towns mm-hmm. with flight attendants. And you see oh, it with yeah. aviation, with cars, with models, with everything. And they do the exact same thing. And yeah. they just rip content and they just make all these photos and they think it's totally acceptable and yep. look i'm not i you know i wasn't trying to make this uh this this big uh movement people are saying it's a movement i'm like no it's not a movement just right stop stealing people's stuff and making money off of it yeah. that's not cool that's all so. the uh the flight attendant thing's a great point too i mean because you know i've been involved with a lot of the stuff having to do with with like model photography and, and the girls you don't want to isolate the women but like there's a I, I find that to be a very slippery slope because there's a difference between a, a girl willingly uploading a photo for her personal account or for her company she's repping uh versus right. somebody stealing that photo and then trying to build their own brand because i think that the fine line is like there, on one hand you have self-expression and i like totally support that and i actually find it to be empowering on the other hand you find like exploitative uh kind of objectification like and and i i totally understand why people could fall on either side but i'm like yo don't like don't just like post random pictures of women at first of all it's creepy as fuck but second of all it's just no you know if you do it to a plane or a person it's just you're using the idea that like this is an objectification and i'm trying to build a following versus somebody saying hey this is my picture (laughs) it's a big difference there right i think that it's like the that's the best example of it and i love when you mentioned that in your i think it was your second video my second video i said that yeah because it, it, it yeah you can't i mean again like i'm not trying to say i'm like you know St. Kelsey here, but <laughs> you can't take Kelsey. people's take people's photos and then right. be like, no, this is totally cool. Because like you said, if you're a girl might have 15 photos, let's take a flight attendant. She might have 15 photos and she might in those 15 have one like where she's being like playfully sexy in her photo where she's like crossing her legs, sitting on a cart. Right. Sure. And in the grand scheme of that content, it's kind of like, oh, this is her being flirty in a photo. Right. Right. But now if you take that and you take 15 or 20 of those different pictures from 15 or 20 different flight attendants and you put that on one feed 
it's like look at all these slutty flight attendants like yeah. it changes the whole context of what it is that this personal uh flight attendant was trying to communicate in her original photo yeah and she never gave permission to do it so mm -hmm. you're just stealing it and then you're, you're putting her in my opinion you're putting her in a bad light or in a light maybe she didn't want to be in now right. if you asked her and said she said yeah cool like uh, look at your photo your page and say yeah i'm i want to be part of that it would be fine but I, I think it's pretty safe to say that's that's not what's happening and there was a lot of female you know influencers that were backing these repost pages and I don't know exactly. if they ever decide to listen to this. I wonder if maybe after hearing a different perspective and if they if they want to educate themselves on it, because I think and that was kind of what in the purpose of the video was. And most of my videos, it, it's education, right? It's like, let me just educate you on something that you maybe didn't know or didn't consider. And so right. that was my intention behind it. And a lot of people or some people took it as I don't know, whatever they wanted to take it as. But Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's maybe now if they look at it from a different perspective of, hey, yeah, I didn't really consider it that maybe these people feel how I feel when they steal all my photos and make a fake account. Maybe that's how the plane spotter feels when he spent, you know, five hours sitting in the blazing sun or, <laughs> you know, four hours sitting in, you know, Canada winter to get one photo. Maybe that's how they feel when that photo gets ripped and put onto right. one of the repost accounts. So yep. maybe they'll change their perspective on it. So and seven four gear has been the one to, in my opinion, start the conversation. And that's always sometimes the hardest move is uh, I always tell people in the gym, they're like, Dave, you know, what do you recommend? I'm like, just get your foot in the door. It's the hardest move you'll do in the gym. It's the same thing when it comes to this, man. You started the the movement, right? Now we just got to keep it going. So uh, for yeah. those of you who are interested, by the way, I didn't even mention in the beginning, but your YouTube is it's just seven four gear, and also it's same thing with Instagram, right? It's all just your yeah, handle for all, that. All, 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 my Twitter, even I, I started the TikTok because I thought this would be fun to do. So oh, all yeah. of them seven four gear, yeah, seven, all seven four, four gear. gear. Very easy yeah. to remember, or so I call it seventy four gear. And then I'm like, wait a minute, oh, I get it, you know, because I'm, yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, typical non pilot over here flying my drones. <laughs> <laughs> flying my drones but uh well hey man it's been an hour talking to you and it feels like two minutes oh, wow. you were just so well spoken and i i've learned so much from this but also just bouncing ideas off people who i think have great ideas and a great mind so keep it up and i invite everybody who's listening to aviation lowdown check out seven four gear my friend hopefully after this COVID thing is over whenever that is we can meet up in the city and uh share a beer or something because i'd love yeah to. for sure or, or maybe we get one of these uh, you know uh, meetups where they they have all the planes that come in there and we can yeah oh yeah and it's famous. that's when that happens again and i'll i'll lotion up with a lot of spf 4000 <laughs> and run outside for for 20 minutes and uh, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm actually pretty tan right now i've been sitting on my deck over the past few weeks but usually like the first few days of the summer i'm like that too my buddy just moved into uh he works in aviation he's gonna be working at jfk but he got a new apartment right down in rockaway and it's like literally you can see the airport from his balcony and i'm like this would be a that's great cool. place to do like a podcast but he's like yeah but every five minutes you know planes go i'm like that's exactly the point man you know it's like right. calling out the planes like we're a bunch of nerds so but I'll be there probably well, a few times this summer for sure, right down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be cool to do some like Instagram lives from there for sure. I don't know if yeah. you've heard. I got, I got uh, F-15 fighter jets that are flying over my head. I don't know if you're hearing those roaring in the background, but I think that's what's flying around in the, the background here. I thought it was just maybe yeah. the voltage of my audio. I have uh, two central AC units, and I have a Furman power conditioner, and I don't have this preamp plugged into it. And every time the AC kicks in, I got there's like a little bit of a. I'm like, oh shit, there it is. Like no, but yeah. I'm, a, I'm an audio nerd, so I heard it. I don't think you. Th these are these are fighter jets. Let me see if I can open these. Well, <laughs> I open the windows, yeah. But I mean, we're we're right out here outside the base. But yeah, it's like all these fighter jets flying around. Which I grew up. I grew up right outside of where they filmed Top Gun in Miramar. Yeah. So. That's that was what I heard my whole childhood was fighter jets flying. So for me, it's I, I sleep like a baby with it. Yeah, I just did the video for the FAA at Miramar MYF. Uh, what is not Miramar uh, Montgomery Gibbs, which is just south. And like right. it's funny because like one of the things they mentioned was sometimes they do get confused pilots who are like lined up for Miramar, and I'm like, really? Dude, this, yeah, apparently imagine this Cessna oh, just like you know playing that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit! This, you know where are all these jets doing? <laughs> Fuck me! We're at the wrong airport. Doesn't look anything alike from the sky, <laughs> but I know it's tough. Here's the thing: I mean, I just made this video. I was talking about like aviation is so humbling. It's mm -hmm. so humbling, and it's it's hard when you start. There's so much information. I 
I went out and did a GA flight um, a few months ago to, to make the, a, a GA video, which I haven't been able to make because of COVID. But mm -hmm. I was going to do the general aviation flight. So I went and got checked out, and I was flying, and the instructor goes, okay, hey, look, so this approach is going to be really fast. We're going to go at like 80 knots. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> in my head, in my head, I'm like, this is all moving so, so slow. But I remember when I was flying my Cessna at 65 knots or whatever the approach speed was, mm -hmm. it felt like, like my hair was on fire. Like this oh, yeah. is all happening so fast. And so, now I'm yeah. landing at like 140, 150 in all a right. crosswind and it's gusty and we're fully loaded with a bunch of passengers. Like, and it's just like, they do, you know, like right. you're focused, but it doesn't feel like your hair is on fire. But yeah, I, I know it's tough. And yep. you know, when you're a new pilot, it's like, everybody wants to, everybody wants to sound like they've been flying a 747 for 40 years, but it just, mm -hmm. it takes practice. And it, I, if you, if you could find all the audio from when I started and all the stupid stuff that I said and used to repeat and mess up, you, you know, <laughs> you'd go, okay, I feel better. And that's why I make fun of myself a lot. in a lot of these other oh, yeah. videos saying like mm, i'll tell you i've done that before because i don't want people to have the impression that you know that you start off being amazing because you can really beat yourself up so yeah i mean everybody it's cool that you're doing that the, the action comes first the confidence comes after you know you're always going to start a little uncomfortable i remember my one of my trainers one of my really good trainers at atc always said this profession is an equal opportunity embarrassment you know every, everyone's been through the trial by fire at some point but you learn, sure. you know, you just keep doing it. But doing this podcast, same thing, man. When I first started doing it, it's a little intimidating, but you just get, you just get more comfortable. And you, sir, are a, uh, a great guest, great, well-spoken guy. Like I always said, guys, check out his video, 7-4 Gear. Very, very well produced, incredibly enthusiastic and just educational. So thanks for doing what you do. I really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Dave. I really appreciate it, man. And we'll be in touch. Maybe we'll do a follow-up in the next few weeks and see where this thing goes. And for those interested, uh, you can also see his responses on uh, some of my posts. Blow out, dude. You're, you're always chiming in. So, you know, it's probably oh. the top post, top comment, rather. <laughs> With a bunch of likes and a bunch of people laughing. I mean, and you're such a great sport about it, too. I mean, I think one <laughs> of the first ones was there was like, you're always giving Emory Riddle kids a hard time. And I'm not, oh, yeah. I never went to Riddle. I did part 61, the, mm -hmm. the real hard way. But uh, yep. anyway, the, the, you said something like it was, they were showing up like someone's uh, moving map on their iPad. And you were like kind of calling them a dork or something like something <laughs> along those lines. And you're like, like, something I would you say. lean over to the girl and you, what do you say? And I wrote, Hey, my name is L.O. And that's what I like. That was my <laughs> thing. That's right. what they said. And everybody was like, oh, my God, that's so funny. And I was like, it's kind of fun. This is like, and <laughs> yeah. you took it in such a good way. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I'll have you know, I'm still waiting to lose my virginity from that post. So one of these days, <laughs> I'm not sure when. Hopefully. I don't know. Sooner maybe, or later. My, maybe my wife will give in finally. But uh, <laughs> hey, man, keep it up. I really appreciate it. Guys, thanks for listening to Aviation Lowdown. I'm your host, L.O., and this is, of course, the guy much cooler and better sounding than me, 7-4 Gear, coming to you from, uh, well, way out in Asia, and I'm here on Long Island. So <laughs> it's been the magic of the internet. So thanks so much, Kelsey. I really appreciate it, my friend. All right. Take care, buddy. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.